AMC stock was down 2% when recorded. We'll discuss all you need to know about AMC stock and our strategy for tomorrow in this video. Click like and subscribe to the channel. Please share your thoughts on this. Down first, Adam Aaron has acknowledged AMC stock's catastrophic value loss for the first time. He has said that putting AMC back on track is his top concern and that the current box office dip is hurting AMC shares. Unfortunately, I think he's blaming the box office rather than well-managed corporations making bad management decisions. Adam Aon and AMC are in a very bad position because AMC will default on its 2026 debt payments regardless of who likes that or not. Even if they refinance, they'll still have to pay a large chunk in 2026 if AMC stock does not recover theoretically. The silver lining is, hey, if you could potentially go out of business by 2026. If you could be in a really bad position by 2026, which is about two years away, now that means management has to get AMC stock higher, they have to do what they don't want to do, and that is give the markets confirmation that they will not be diluting shareholders that is by far the number one thing. That is keeping money out of AMC stock is the constant rounds of dilution that we have seen on an almost you know quarter by quarter basis over the last couple of quarters, and the latest round of dilution that happened after AMC's last earnings about three months ago has started this downward slide. From $11.50 per share down to where are currently at, at $438 per share, like over the last three months AMC stock did not go from $11.50 to $438 since and saints, because markets one day just woke up and said there's not a lot of movies going to theaters, uh, we should sell AMC stock down 70% over the next three months. That's not how these things work. The last round of dilution just showed the total disregard or lack of fundamental management that the management of AMC has for the stock of AMC. And a lot of retail investors have since walked away from the trade, have since sold the stock, and when you don't have. Retail no longer backing the stock up the way that you used to. You cannot just continue to dump uh, on shareholders right now. Don't let me be too jaded here or anyone else be too jaded here. Because recently, if you've been an investor in AMC, although delusion has been detrimental, it may be positive if it substantially changes the firm or helps it remember by low sell. I well, a lot of people like to buy high sell low. What AMC is essentially doing when they sell stock at multi-year lows is selling low right. They're selling their equity in the company in the company and diluting your equity at a very, very low price. And when that happens, that is an, a big, big problem, right? That's, that's not what you want. Since AMC's management's jobs are at risk, if they can't make the 2026 payments, I'm sure they'll make the right decisions in the coming months. According to Ortex statistics, 1.24 million sold short shares are on the market, representing 99.46% of the $16.22 million short interest in AMC stock. Cost of borrowing 19.36%, you have 62.44% of AMC stock options volume today, with a short score of 56.3 out of 101.06% utilization of 34.29%. Market going towards the call side in 37.563936 music is for sure now. Um, as far as the stock twit sentiment gauge for AMC uh, stock, and I just want to reiterate after everything that I just said again, I am confident AMC stock will get better, that there will be better days ahead coming for AMC. But I do think, um, you may have to see a little bit more uh, of a docile stock, maybe the stock not doing much for a period of time, or even falling a little bit more. Um, but I do think today's acknowledgement from Adam Aaron shows that he is is literally looking at the stock at, at $4 per share as that, is too low because again, fundamentally AMC will not survive if they cannot raise capital. It might, it's going to take a while. AMC is not going to go bankrupt, you know, a couple quarters down the line, it's going to take a while. But if AMC can never raise capital higher than $4 per share, they do not. Have, have enough shares that they could even sell at $4 per share to pay off their debt. And they're not going to make enough free cash flow or profits to pay off the debt as well. That's a definitive fact, especially with the box office that we have over the next 12 months. Things may not return to normal until 2026, even though 2025 is better. I don't expect a 2025 box office boom, but 2026 may. If so, it will likely happen in the second half of the year. And if AMC is still diluting shareholders, it won't affect basic metrics. AMC stock is trading at a pretty low valuation. Um, about $894 million is the total market cap in AMC. So even now with the market cap where it is, a larger company could potentially buy out AMC. Of course, when you buy out a company, you have to buy out the debt. So that's about $9 billion worth of debt. Some people think it's only like AMC has $9 billion worth of debt. They're never going to be able to pay that off based on their fundamentals alone. So keep that in mind now. Here is the activity on stock twit for AMC stock. If you look at sentiment that is sitting at 33 yesterday, you were bullish at 60. That's because AMC stock was, you know, having a relatively 
um, decent day yesterday. The the last you you've rallied like ten percent or so in the last couple of days. So that's why some of the sentiment has been a little bit better recently. But it's going back to the bearish side here on the day to day message volume is normal at forty five, which is better than yesterday at thirty five. So that's some good news. Participation ratio is also at forty five. That's a lot better than also where. It has been recently so a little bit of good news on that front as well. So now let's go ahead and look at the AI investor sentiment survey. We are going to get a new one coming out this week that is going to be on Thursday. I'm looking to see uh, at least what I expect the bulls to pick up the neutral investors to pick up and the bears are probably going to fall a little bit as stocks have once again hit new all-time highs. It will be interesting if neutral investors pick up the bulls lose a little bit here and bearish investors pick up that would tell me maybe the markets are in a little bit better of a place after all. If you look at the percentage of stocks above their 50-day moving average, which is up a little bit today but flat on the day, you're only at 67, which at the high you were at about 87 back here at the end of December, so you have seen Friday's expiration may boost the market. If Netflix releases great results today and after hours, this seems likely. I don't anticipate AMC to show any sympathy for Netflix's performance since they're unrelated. I think Netflix can affect markets generally because… If people add Netflix, the situation may not be as bad as some think. User cancellations are concerning. AMC's Stockle Tracker shows 88,200 calls in the money, 77, or approximately 78,000 calls out of the money, 25,000 puts, and 177,000 indicating reasonable option activity. You have seen several calls go out of the money that were previously in the money, so that may look better. Netflix earnings and after-hours intuitive surgery will also occur today. Texas Steel Dynamics Baker Instruments, Kim Clark QCN, and a few banks tomorrow morning. At TML Abbott Prog lists continue after that. Tesla after hours tomorrow, IBM service currently Sans and Lamb Research are your essential stocks. These stocks can move drastically, so watch them in the coming days. Similar to Intel, these stocks will affect the entire market. This week was amazing, but next week we'll report large dogs and loads of earnings. Your 10-year Treasury yield is up 4.5 basis points today, which is hurting stocks, although some are performing nicely. In an American Express Friday pre-market on Thursday, Visa Capital One and American Express report large earnings starting earnings season. Track the Fed rate with this program. Update for March 20th. A pause and first rate cut are related. This week's GDP and personal income figures should cement that. If you price in one, two, three, four, five, and six rate cuts for 2024, the odds are 35.1%. 32.7%, 14.2%, and 14.2%, and 14.2%. Yes, there's much uncertainty. Friday will provide the first inflation numbers. Three and six monthly annualized core PCE under 2% is a good sign and will likely allow the Fed to decrease rates in March. Although the markets are closed, Netflix has not announced its profits. I'll update you on anything noteworthy. The markets are pricing in 10% for Netflix's results, so good news will lift them and bad news would lower them.